Uh, it was the, uh, the vision of, of uh, Bill Virtus and Dr. Jorge Huerta, who, was, uh, who I believe is now a professor emeritus of, of uh, Latino theater at the UC system. Uh, they uh, saw uh, a dearth of, of uh, theater that spoke to the Latino and all the other uh, diversity communities in San Diego. And as they were both well, uh, uh, very knowledgeable about theater, uh, they started the Atro Mascara to fill, to fill a need. And over the past 30 years, uh, primarily, uh, Bill Virtus has shepherded uh, Teatro Mascara, TMM as we call it, uh, and brought it to a point now where we now have a, uh, a venue, and we're going to be doing some very exciting things uh, in the near future. I believe the artistic mission of uh, Teatro Mascara is to present uh, stories uh, of people who are not of the majority population, the diversity population. Stories that really are American stories, but they're told either through an African American, an Asian American, a Latino voice. And uh, to be faithful to that. And I think the, also the, uh, the other mission is to educate. Again, these communities that by and large have been ignored by quote unquote traditional theater companies in San Diego educate them of the, of the power and the beauty of theater and art. And uh, it extends not only to just sitting in, in the audience and, and watching, for example, La Pasadela, but knowing what it is to put up a camera, to run a sound system, to set a stage, to direct, to produce, to act. Uh, there, there are now two generations of young people who, but for Teatro Mascara, uh, may not have ever known theater, and now many of them are actually making a living in theater. So the mission is, is really uh, multi-fold, multi uh, many aspects to what we do. But it really is to celebrate the, the beautiful voices that have been ignored by, again, I use the term traditional theater, and, and I really think that's incorrect, because what is traditional theater? Traditional theater should be literally a stage where all voices, all experiences, the human experiences, are, um, <clears throat> are celebrated and, and displayed. Diversity uh, in theater in everything is critical, because we are a diverse community. And uh, it is inconceivable to me that you can have a healthy community if it is ignoring a part of itself. I was a prosecutor for many years. And I argued for diversity in terms of uh, the uh, district attorneys. Well, why? Because, for example, if we have a victim of sexual assault who is Latina or maybe even undocumented, uh, one can only really do their job competently in assessing the credibility of that victim and being able to ultimately help her if you understand the cultural dynamics that are pressing upon her, the shame that she anticipates she'll experience if she goes back to her, her uh, little town or village in Mexico, uh, the fear of law enforcement, uh, that uh, she cannot come forward because they'll deport her. Or... So again, it, it, it's, it's, uh, you, you cannot be, in my view, a healthy community if you ignore part of who you are as a community. The Artisa de Honor program reflects the, uh, the lifelong passion and commitment of, uh, of our artistic director, Bill Virtus. He has mentored, he has trained, he has brought up uh, uh, generations, as I say, of actors and directors and uh, composers and playwrights. And it is their opportunity to pay back, to give back to, to, the, to the mission and to their community. Uh, I personally think that uh, they are honored. I mean, we honor them, but really uh, they are honored to be able to come back and give back for all of the they have received. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of 
It's a Wonderful Life. <clears throat> what would theater be in San Diego without Teatro Mascara? Um, it would be fine for you know a, a number of the the people in San Diego, but it would it would not be there for the diverse community that we have. The new relationship that we've developed with Casa Familiar in San Isidro uh, is, uh, to use a cliche, a win-win situation. Casa Familiar has, has been a major uh, a part of the San Isidro community for up to 40 years, providing education, health care, a myriad of social resources for that community. Uh, what, what they lacked was an artistic component. And to their credit, they, as they looked at their, their future, they said, we, we need to provide an artistic voice for our community, pretty much taking care of everything else. So they looked around and um, connected with Teatro Mascara. We were delighted to meet with them over a series of months and were so impressed at their professionalism, at their dedication, at their focus, which was all about helping the people in their community. And as I've described our mission, that's our mission as well. So we, uh, we are the theater company of residence, the Casa Familiar. We'll begin our residency in uh, next September. We expect to have a full three to four major production season and do a, a number of educational programs. Uh, have fifth and sixth graders write little skits, uh, have them act them out, talk about some of the issues that teenagers are facing, like bullying, pregnancy, gangs, drug abuse, etc. These are all, by the way, programs that Teatro Mascara has already uh, heavily involved in. We've been doing that work probably 20, 25 years. So we're bringing that expertise, that experience to San Isidro. So I, I think it's going to be a beautiful collaboration. Uh, there is uh, so much to be done. And I, I think it is uh, right and proper that we finally have a venue, a permanent home, and it is in San Isidro, which is culturally, uh, geographically, in every sense of the word, linked to Mexico. It is veritably the bridge between the U.S. and Mexico. And that has been a major part of Teatro Mascara's mission. So whatever forces came to, uh, to bear, uh, they brought us to the right place. 30 years, congratulations to Bill Virtus and the, uh, the 30 year anniversary is, uh, of our theater company is, is amazing to me. The constancy of the commitment um, through, with basically no operating budget. Uh, it's, it's been on, on the shoulders of the goodwill and the uh, community involvement. So I, 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 I'm so proud to be a part of a organization that has that legacy. And I can tell you, if the, given the challenges that Teatro has faced in the past 30 years, um, there is no challenge ahead of us that measures up to what we've had to uh, uh, overcome. Uh, in the past 30 years. So we, we, we start, and again, with Casa Familiar uh, at a full gallop. We're ready. Uh, the community knows us, the community respects us. And when I speak of the community, I'm speaking far and wide. Uh, Los Angeles, where we uh, did a full production at the Los Angeles Theater Com uh, Center um, and beyond. Uh, so we're ready, the community is ready for us. So as to the future, I, I, I don't think there is any limit to what we will accomplish. People can, uh, can help Teatro Mosca and be involved in what we do by, of course, going to our productions. We're going to be, as I said, in San Isidro. 
And they need to understand that it is a great place to go to. That uh, uh, issues like parking and personal safety uh, should not be a concern for them. And uh, a few minutes on the freeway, they're going to be at a great theater, actually two venues that we'll have access to. And they're going to see world-class theater. That's one way they can be a part of the theater. Uh, secondly, our, our door is always open. We, uh, we, 30 years doing this is only because our doors have been open. Where, uh, again, uh, Bill Virtus has, has mentored, he's welcomed people. We always have open ad uh, auditions. As we speak, we're going to hold a, uh, an audition in a couple of weeks for our upcoming pasarela. And you don't have to bring your uh, 8 by 10 glossies. or uh, You need to bring your heart and your willingness to, uh, to be involved. Obviously, donations are always <laughs> welcomed. Um, but we, we have thrived because people support us, and they honor our mission, and they see that we are actually bringing art and a voice to their community. How can money help us? Donations? Uh, uh, Self-evident, uh, you, you can't put on a play unless you have money to pay actors, to buy costumes, to uh, design sets, build them, etc. We heavily discount our ticket prices. It's actually almost a joke at how inexpensive. We give actually half the house away for most of our productions. We, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we basically are a zero budget operation, I mean, our annual budget is probably four or five costumes at the Old Globe. Uh, we uh, we would like to do more. We put on a first-class production. If we had more money, we could uh, maybe do one more or two more shows a season, pay our actors a little more. So every dollar that we get goes into production or into education. There's no, there's no uh, expense accounts. There's no... Um, it, it all goes into a costume, into uh, a two-hour class for young children about art, about theater, having them s stand up and do a skit. That's where the money goes. So the more resource we have, the more we can do. The uh, Teatro Mascula is really important to me on a personal level because uh, as I've mentioned, I was a prosecutor for 30 years. So I, the cases that I got, obviously, were uh, where there were no winners. You had a victim, and you had someone who was likely to go to jail or prison. So no one wins in that situation. The, the only thing that you can hope to do is to prevent those incidents, obviously. So crime prevention has always been really uh, important to me because by the time I get a case, it, it's sad. Uh, some years ago, I was uh, on the board of directors of the uh, Central Cultural in Balboa Park, and I was there during a the lunch break. There was uh, an exhibit. We had artwork done by a recently uh, released felon, Latino felon, who gangs and drugs he was a painter, and he had 15 or 20 paintings, and they were very, very intense, very passionate. It happened that there was a group of Latino high school students. Their teacher had taken them to the center. So I stood back and I watched them, and I watched their reactions. And I could literally see lights going on. I could see change. I could see acknowledgment. So this is what happened. At the time, uh, you know, the Just Say No to Drugs campaign was on. Well, you know, that's all good and well, but you could say that a million times, and it, it, it probably isn't going to connect to those kids, but they connected to that art. The power of art and the absence of art means an absence of voice 
absence of expression, it's absence. And historically, diversity communities, particularly Latino communities, have been absent, invisible. One of our productions that I think uh, Bill has spoken about is The Pitch, Paul Rodriguez's uh, basically statement of fact about the absence of Latinos anywhere in entertainment. Uh, he says, you know, the pitch is the answer to the question, why aren't there more Latinos on TV, on the stage, in movies, et cetera. So if you, if you aren't present artistically, you're invisible. And if you're invisible, people aren't going to see your needs. And if they don't see your needs, they're not going to address them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So theater has given us visibility. It's allowed people who don't have the Latino experience to experience it. I, I, uh, I'm always uh, so happy to see non-Latinos in our audiences, at, for example, La Pasadela, because you see them enjoying it. You see them walking away knowing a little bit more about the community. And if you know about something, you tend to care about it a little more. So I, I'm, I'm deeply committed to, to what we do, our mission because it actually changes and improves lives. We did a uh, production, a Latino version of The Odd Couple. For example, whereas The Odd Couple is set in New York, uh, we set it in San Diego. There were, there were references to Tijuana, and there were other localized uh, and cultural references that we were able to incorporate. Uh, it was extremely successful with the, with the entire audience. Uh, first of all, it's just a great play. I think someone said that uh, at any given point in time, the odd couple is being produced somewhere in the world. But uh, what we did was to make it more local and, I guess, more relevant. Uh, the laughs that we got, we may have gotten anyway with the original script because it's so good, but they not only enjoyed the humor, but they enjoyed the connection, the intimacy of talking about the Paloma sisters instead of the Pigeon sisters. Uh, jokes about Tijuana instead of, you know, the Bronx. This was also the vision of our artistic director uh, who saw the value of bringing that great play and making it relevant. Kind of s telling the story in a Latino voice, which is uh, something I, I also feel strongly about we look at stories, the classic Broadway stories, Oklahoma, Fiddler on the Roof. Um, they're actually, even uh, Fiddler on the Roof isn't even set in America, but <clears throat> they tell an American story, but in a, in, with a different voice, right? Oklahoma is the Midwest uh, ethics. And yet when we talk about our place, they're almost dismissed as, well, they're Latino. Well, how about their American plays, American stories, American experiences told with a Latino voice? Just like Rent, a great musical told with a, a different voice, but it's, it's, it's about American experience. Um, the pitch uh, was extremely successful. It, it was funny. It told a very sobering story in a very funny way. It did not challenge the audience. It entertained the audience, but all the while educating them, giving them an insight what it is to try to pitch a show in Hollywood that isn't looking at your story. It's looking at s some graph, some table that says, you know, it's not worth the million dollars where you invest. Um, so I, these productions, I, I think, uh, harbinger uh, the, the willingness and the appetite that not only the Latino community, but the general community has for shows that gives us insight into other people's experiences, other cultures. 